Good day, ladies and gentlemen. We are from Python Project Team 68, and we'll be presenting on our Python project, Fraud Detection in Shopee. Let's dive into the problem statement. With the rise in popularity of e-commerce platforms, consumers rely heavily on product reviews before making a purchase with confidence. However, they can be easily misinformed by fake reviews, usually made by the merchant themselves. Fake reviews can easily boost their products, and through the algorithm, their products are usually shown to customers first. This could potentially disrupt your services, and consumers might lose trust in these platforms when purchasing products do not meet their stated requirements. We'll now move on to the solution to the issue. This is a high-level overview approach to our solution. Firstly, we start with the data team. They have scraped the data information from Shopee and used data analysis and machine learning. Once this is done, the data team will pass the information into a database, which will be showcased on the web page by the GUI team. Moving on to data sets, we have collected data directly from Shopee by using web scraping tools such as Beautiful Soup and Selenium. We focus on five main categories, such as keyboards, headphones, mouse, monitors, and speakers. From here, we extract the merchant's name, products, and reviews. This is then saved into a CSV file named Merchant, Product, and Review. Before analyzing the data, we need to transform it into their respective data types and set the primary or foreign key for our database. So starting with our first data table, uh, merchant table, the, the number of records were reduced from 592 to 290 after data transformation due to the presence of duplicate merchants in five categories. Next, the product table has a total of 592 records and 14 script features that are then converted into their respective data type and removed two redundant features and added 10 features engineered by the data team. The process on how we engineered the data, it will be covered in the later part of the presentation. Similarly, for the review table, there are a total of 155,000 of review records and seven script features that are then transformed into their data type and remove one redundant feature. And lastly, we created a new table for users generated from the reviews table. The users table has around 80,000 users and one engineered features were added. And now the data is, re is ready for analysis. Now, moving on to the analysis part, let's start with the user analysis. So for the username, we use something called the Levenstein distance to calculate the edit score between two strings. Whereby edit can be one of three actions, adding a character, deleting a character, or modifying a character. The takeaway from this page is on the right bottom corner, whereby when the edit score is close to zero, then it means that two strings are very similar and it's indicating a spam account. What do I mean by this? On to the next slide, we can see that on the bottom left corner, for example, pure serene 01 and pure serene 07 are two very similar usernames, and their score is 0 0.083. And from this, we can flag out that usernames with a lower Levenstein distance score, typically below 0 0.4, has some suspicious activities. For example, on the right top corner, you can see that for a, a same account made four reviews, same reviews on four different products at the same time. And we can tie this to a new feature called credibility score to each product, whereby the users can infer to make a more informed decision. This is a distribution of the Levenstein distance. And moving on to the next page, we jump into the rating analysis. So how did Shopee calculate the average rating for every product? They use something called the product-based averaging, whereby they add all the users' rating and they average it by the number of users. The issue though, is that when a merchant created a several dummy accounts to boost their rating, we can see that from 2.67, it can jump to four. And this is actually shown from the diagram below, whereby most products on Shopee have an average rating of four to five, which is actually not helpful for a user who's making a purchase on Shopee. So to solve this, we are introducing the mean centering for user rating, whereby we calculate the user base average at a, a user's uh, rating across all products, and we minus that average across all the ratings. In the end, the takeaway on the right bottom corner, we can see that all the spam accounts rating are ignored and the authentic accounts rating are emphasized. We can see that on this slide, on the right side, we can see that there are some products whose average rating is actually lower, like let's say 3.9, but their normalized rating is actually high, like positive. 
at, at the same time, there are some products whose average rating is 4.5, slightly higher, but the normalized rating is actually low, which are actually bad products. So this is some additional information that we provide to the users to make a more informed purchase. Moving on to the third analysis, sentiment analysis. Reader sentiment analyzer was used to assign sentiment labels to each review as either positive or negative. It will evaluate and produce a sentiment score for every text between negative 1 to 1. And to classify the sentiment of the text, we have to determine a threshold score. So from this graph, it shows the distribution of sentiment scores. We can see that a significant number of reviews are neutral, with the strongest negative sentiment at 0 0.25 and a notable increase at 0 0.5. And therefore, the threshold for classifying sentiment is set to the median value of the two, with positive scores not being zero for positive sentiment and vice versa. From the pie chart, we can see that about half of the total reviews had text, and in this half, 19.9% were negative, meaning that a quarter of the users were not satisfied. This suggests that uh, merchants need to identify common pain points and areas for improvement to enhance the user experience. And to help with that, we identified the top three positive and negative words based on text reviews of products. This helps merchants understand a user opinions and allow user to see pros and cons of products quickly for more efficient decision making. Now, we on to the fourth analysis, the merchant analysis. We use three features of the merchants, number of followers, total ratings, and the number of days they spend on Shopee. The first part of this analysis is a scatter plot of each feature against each other and a 3D scatter plot. And after that, we perform a round of clustering, and we can see that tag zero or the first cluster is overpopulated with data points. Therefore, for cluster zero, we further perform another analysis, uh, clustering as shown on the left side here, and we can see that it is more evenly spaced out now. In the end, we're being left with seven clusters, and we tag it from beginner level one to beginner level four merchant, intermediate merchant, top merchant, and ultra merchant as a segmentation that we can analyze further. As to how we select the number of clusters, we perform the uh, elbow method and we select the, the elbow point as the number of clusters that we use. And on the right side is our final visualization of the clustering. Let's dive right into the core of Shopee Zero. There are a total of four main functions here. Firstly, the home page consists of a product catalog and user's page. Secondly, the comparison function for users to compare up to four products. Thirdly, an export function to PDF for future reference. And lastly, we can access the product details and user details individually. So over here, this is our home page. It's a carefully curated collection of products cards. So, there are a total of three main functions in our homepage. Firstly, the search bar allows our users to search for products both quickly and efficiently without having to scroll through long lists of products. Next, the users can select up to four products in this product catalog for comparison. Lastly, you can see the view detail button that will show more product details, for example, the price, product description, average rating, and etc. And this will be displayed to the customer once they click on that view details button. Upon selecting the products and clicking on the comparison button at the bottom right hand corner, it will lead to a comparison page. So here, these are the normalized rating, top three positive and the top three negative words, as well as the reviews credibility. This information consists of data analysis from the data team. And this information over here enables users to make sound purchasing decisions. As you can see from the previous page, we can actually export the PDF to be saved in the computer for future reference. Additionally, we implemented the product and the user details page for users to search for more product information in the case of suspicion of the users. This helps distinguish whether it is a suspicious user that's just commenting on the product to boost the product's rating. Lastly, in case you want to reach out to us for future opportunities, we have the About page and the Contact Us page. Now, let's move on to a live demonstration presented by Ting Yu. Thank you, Alina. So now I'll begin my live demonstration. As you can see, there's a search 
bar, search bar here. And users can search for, let's just say, headphones and click on the search icon right here, which will bring them to the headphones result page. And from here, users can click on the compare button. And then this will lead them to the comparison product page. Right, as you can see, uh, users will be given uh, details such as normalized rating, top three positive and negative words, as well as reviews credibility. And then at the right bottom, there will be an export to PDF functions, which utilize which uh which is possible by utilizing the XHTML to PDF library import, and then it will give us the PDF file as you can see here. So you they will also retain data such as normalized rating. Top three positive negative words as well as reviews credibility inside this uh, PDF file for future references. Next, users can click on view details to view details of the product, such as total rating, average and average rating, etc. Next will be the users page where users can search for other users, for example, um, this guy right here, and click on the search icon here. We shall search for this user and then they can view user details right here. We shall tell them the number of reviews this user had left on a product and also what's the mean rating of the user and also what's the most similar username of this user. So next will be the About Us page where it's about our team basically who work on this project. And next will be the Contact Us page where it's a form for users to fill up to give us feedback on what other stuff we can improve on. Thank you. Let's discuss some limitations we had during our project on detecting fraud in Shopee. Firstly, reviewer anonymity. Some users would hide their usernames. This is an optional function provided by Shopee when users would like to input their feedback on a product. This is an issue as it hinders our username analysis. Secondly, privacy concerns. Due to the Data Protection Act, important information such as email and phone numbers are not displayed on the platform. Thirdly, limited data. Since we are only scraping data from Shopee's webpage, we will not have data that is as in-depth as Shopee's database. Next, we will look at some future considerations. If, for example, we are working in Shopee, we will have access to the database. And with the data sets available, we will be able to access the merchant's and user's email to better apply string similarity to flag out for your users. With more data as well, we are able to generate better and more credible insights. Do note that our project serves as a proof of concept. However, the methodology can be applied to better data sets. This is a technical stack that we have deployed for our project. For web scraping, we use Beautiful Soup and Selenium. For the data analysis, visualization, feature analysis, and machine learning, we use Pandas, Scikit-learn, Matplotlib, and C1. For version control, we use GitHub. For the database, we use PostgreSQL and SQLite. For web development and web deployment, we use Django and Verso. Some other tools and libraries used include SDRSIM, Vader Sentiment, XHTML to PDF, NLTK, and lastly, WordCloud. We have come to the end of our presentation. These are the members of Python Project Team 68. Please do connect with us on LinkedIn and feel free to drop us an email for any clarification. You can scan the QR code to check out our webpage. Thank you for your time.